opportunity with starting now. So let's harness ourselves, get our minds together as we come to study the Word of God. Let me also welcome those of you that are here and uh, those of you that are on Facebook. We welcome you tonight and we thank the Lord for you joining us. We ask if you you're here, just press a button and just in, ask someone to join. You're studying the book of Revelation, chapter 14. This is the last half of it tonight. Amen. Last week, we looked at Revelation 14, verse 1, where we said, and I, it read, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, with him an hundred forty and four thousand, saying, Having his father's name written on their foreheads. The question we asked last week is, um, are these 40, 144,000 people in Revelation 14 the same, the same as we saw in chapter 7? And we looked at different reasons why there is a difference. And we asked, um, we noticed both groups in 7 and 14, a total of 144,000. Both have something written on their foreheads. But we also said, while some scholars view the difference, the Revelation 7 group is, we will note if we go back to the scripture in Revelation 7, they were specifically Jewish. There were 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe. Revelation 14. We'll notice that these, there are no mention of them being Jewish. They're from the earth or from among men. The Bible said they followed the lamb wheresoever he goes. They were purchased from among men and offered as first, first fruits to God and the lamb. Whereas, the, whereas these of Revelation 14 do not have that mark but rather seem to have to be from a larger circle than Israel, from among men. Amen. And their particular distinction appears to be a reward for their utter self abnegation. Amen. Praise God. As we move on tonight, I want us to look, praise God, at Revelation chapter 14. Amen. In verse 6, I, and I saw an, an, another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having a, the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, that every kindred and tongue and people. You remember last week we spent some time, listen up please, we spent some time, we looked at this for a little we said um, the Greek word for angel is, is the same word for messenger. We noticed that this angel was flying in the, air, in the air with the everlasting gospel. I said to you, an angel cannot preach gospel. Can anyone tell me why they can't preach the gospel? They're not redeemed. Because you have to speak up, please, because someone is They're listening to us. They're not redeemed. They are not redeemed. And it's only redeemed a person can tell the story. We can say the Lord is a shepherd, but to say the Lord is my shepherd is totally different. He is a shepherd, but he's not the shepherd of everyone. The Lord is a savior, but he doesn't say, it's not everyone is said. Amen. So these people, if you recall what I said, they, this, this angel, it could not be a normal angel, although the Greek word is angelos, but the same word angelos is used for angel as well as messenger. The fact that this person was flying within the air with everlasting gospel, John could only, if John see an airplane, 
at that time, he would think it's, he would say, so he'd describe it. There's no word to describe your plane at that time. So he would say he saw him flying in the air. He recognized the, the person who was carried. And the person was going from country to country. What were they preaching? The everlasting gospel. Now, notice the term <coughs> everlasting. Believers, Paul said, if any man preach another gospel than the one we preach, let him be a curse. The gospel is the only thing that can save people. Amen. Amen. So this person, not even Jesus himself, will preach the gospel because Jesus is the redeemer. Amen. So we have to preach the gospel. Amen. So let's move on. Um, praise God. There followed, verse 8, another angel saying, Babylon is falling. Is falling. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Amen. Praise God. Where is Babylon? Anyone know? Iraq. Iraq. Mesopotamia. Around that region. Okay. Babylon the country of Babylon is a, the present day. The country of Babylon is a present day Iraq. Mm -hmm. Babylon was first mentioned. Anybody remember where? Mm -hmm. No? Can you remember next time if I ask? It's in Genesis 11. It was a city on the Euphrates River comprised of the descendants of Shem. One of who's who's Shem again? Noah's son. Noah's son. Noah's son. Thank you, Brother Chip. Praise God. Okay. The city itself was becoming self reliant with one language seeking worldwide power and dominion. From all the way back there, Babylon had the intention of making a name for itself. Their once all powerful self reliance spoiled showed their lack of faith in God. Today, their all-powerful self-reliance upon oil made them less trusting to God. Babylon became a great city under Nebuchadnezzar's rule. I want you to notice something here, that the, the, the kingdom of Persia, Iran, was destroyed. Yes, it was destroyed by Cyrus. Um, the Babylonians were destroyed. The, um, they were taken over by the Medes. But I want you to also notice that these countries, Iran, Babylon, they are still um, surviving today. It was, Babylon was the home of one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Hanging Garden that King Nebuchadnezzar made for his wife. Mm -hmm. Now, God also, they had that intention to build, a, you remember what, in Genesis? Of Babel. The of Tower Babel. of, thank you, Janet. Praise God. The Tower of Babel. So you see how long they wanted to gain independence, ascendancy. They wanted to be at world dominion. Mm -hmm. Babylon in the Old Testament became a symbol of wealth power and prosperity in the region, worshiping idols and not the God of Israel. You remember when Nebuchadnezzar built Babylon, he went out one day and he said, look at this great Babylon that I have built. I, I, I built cultivated a garden in Mesca when I was pastoring there. And uh, um, I had some guys came from Nottingham to help me. They were working for, for us, the church. And uh, they were painting, um, decluttering the house, but the settees were old settees and the wardrobes. So I put them in this big skip and they said to me, um, Bishop, you um, waste in the space in the settee. Why don't you burn all the, the wood in the garden? And I did. I burned all the wood, the wardrobe in the garden. And furthermore, I, it was a wood thump, lumber place. I went and got lumber from them, all scraps, and burned 
and create hashes and turn it over. And I planted some pumpkin. <laughs> the pumpkin leaves were big like this. Mm -hmm. And every morning I used to go to the back window and say, Lord, forgive me, but look at this beautiful <laughs> garden that I have built. I don't want to sound like that because I say, but Lord, you really make it look good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when I was leaving of August, I was supposed to have left July, August. I went to the neighbor and I said, listen, I have to hand back the keys and everything, but can you cut a hole through your fence? Mm -hmm. I can come back and get my pumpkin. <laughs> because I, every, it was looking so good. Anyway, I don't know how that got into it. Just strike it off the record. Amen. So Babylon and the Old Testament uh, became a symbol of wealth, power, and prosperity in the region. Nebuchadnezzar not only builds great statues and asks everybody to bow to it, and if you didn't bow to it, you would be dead. He had magicians, soothsayers, astrologists, all demonic um, workers flocking in. Now, we need to understand how the, the people of Babylon themselves were thinking. Amen. Many people disregard the prophecies of the Bible. But those who study their fulfillment believe that the fall of Babylon will take place as it is written during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Some people claim our world is approaching the end times. However, we have a way of knowing because God has signaled to us. Mm -hmm. Let me remind you of the signal that God gave to us. Jesus himself said to us, this is what he said. There is a generation that will know. People are asking, what are the signs of the times of my coming? Jesus said that there is a generation, this generation, he said it will not pass. And what generation? He said the generation that will see the, the, the characteristics of Noah's generation. They were eating, they were drinking, they don't care. And the, if I say to monkey, please don't think that I'm swearing. Monkey is a animal that jump up on trees, okay? They didn't care two monkeys. Whether or not Noah's heart was going to be taken away, they didn't care. There was uh, Jesus also used Lot. And may I remind every one of us, demons don't die. Angels can't die. They, they cannot die. So Sodom and Gomorrah, and the suburbs and the surrounding cities were destroyed. Mm -hmm. The people were destroyed, but not the demons. Yeah. But Jesus said, what characterized Sodom will characterize the generation that see him coming, mm -hmm. his coming, he return. Amen. Yeah. Anything else that the Lord pointed out? Come on. There'll be earthquakes in diverse places. Yeah. If you study, if you're going to Google and study, um, what do you call that, that dictionary in Google? Um, Wikipedia. And Wikipedia. Yeah. Wiki, you will learn from Wikipedia and Google that there have been more earthquakes mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. since 1948 mm -hmm. to now than happened before 1948 mm -hmm. yeah. in the world. So Jesus said, this generation that see these things mm -hmm. shall not pass. Mm -hmm. A generation is Sister Dorcas' father. Herself, mm -hmm. her son, and her grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. And you block if you have another one. Okay? Babylon of the... What was the common downfall of Babylon? Babylon and the Old Testament and the New shared a common downfall. Idol worship was their main sin. Mm -hmm. Babylon idolized, its, idolized itself, and it did not acknowledge or glorify God in any way. God had to discipline Nebuchadnezzar. We can't become obsessed with worshipping money, careers. When you think and you look at the way we act today, you'll be surprised how much idol worship is in our life. We can become obsessed with worshipping money, careers, economic, state, economic status, education, or politics. When we become focused on striving for success in these areas and not on God. We begun to rely on the role 
on their role in our lives rather than God's provision. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody? Mm -hmm. Amen. So here we are asking about Babylon, okay? Let's look at it a little closer. We can become obsessed with money, as I said, and all of these things. I don't look, look, at, let, look at it a little closer. There are five idols of Babylon that will cause her downfall. And you'll mostly find it in Revelation 17 to 18. John shares the words of the angel and Babylon downfall. Babylon served their own gods mm -hmm. and other nations look to Babylon as God. Okay? Number one, idol of self-sufficiency. They were self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Sodom was saying, I know that we were told that he had a weapon of mass destruction. I am not saying he didn't, and I'm not saying he did. Saddam Hussein also, and um, Colonel Gaddafi. Colonel Gaddafi had pledged to do a lot of things in Africa. That if he had done it, they would have looked to him like the Chinese, that they're looking to the Chinese now in the Americas. It was best to get rid of him. So with Nebuch it was Nebuchadnezzar. Idol of self-sufficiency. They have oil. And to take over Kuwait oil as well, that would just make the world bow at their feet. So it was self-sufficiency. Two, the idol of comfort. Babylon, as you notice in Revelation 18, 14 to 17. Look at it. Somebody look at it and read for me, please. They were clothed, they will be clothed in luxury and wealth. Chapter 18, 14 to 17. Anybody seen it? Mm -hmm. Verse 15, the fruits that thy soul lusteth after are departed from thee. That's the thing that you really care about. Mm -hmm. And all things which were dainty and godly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. Mm -hmm. the, thy, the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, mm -hmm. and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. Every shipmaster and all the accompanying ships and sailors and as many as trade by the sea stood afar off. Believers, I don't know how you see this. Um, if you go to the port, um, Jamaica is becoming one of the top ports in the world, like Singapore. For those of you who didn't know, they have spent over one year dredging the sea in Falmouth. So the largest container ships, the big one, the biggest mongers, mm -hmm. and the biggest cruise ship can land in Falmouth. The idea is that mm -hmm. they will take the big containers of the big ship that cannot go into the other islands mm -hmm. because they have got a port that they will take those containers and carry them there or the, they, they will send for the containers there so there were storehouses mm -hmm. you understand me mm -hmm. now imagine all these container ships coming towards babylon mm -hmm. you're talking about they're waiting in queue just like the airport when the planes are coming, whether it's coming from China, mm -hmm. every three minutes, I believe, there's a plane landing in Heathrow Airport. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine all these ships coming mm -hmm. and waiting into dock. Mm -hmm. And then in one hour, Babylon is destroyed. Mm -hmm. 
No one can fathom or comprehend mm -mm. How, diff how awesome this will be. But it's there in the Bible. Yeah. Remember Babylon has built with oil and on oil wells. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. Just like how Sodom and Gomorrah God light the wells yeah. mm -hmm. and turn it in sulfur. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. It may, it, it, uh, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So there are coming all these merchant ships coming in queue. Mm -hmm. They're coming to sell their merchants yeah. because Babylon will take it and resell it mm -hmm. otherwise and ship it out to somewhere else. Okay? Yeah. And all of a sudden the, the whole nation, the whole country went up in smoke, burning, sulfur, mm -hmm. rise. Okay? Mm -hmm. They had no need for God and this provision. And this is the problem when we become, as Christians, comfortable. We amass an abundant, uh, amass abundance. And before long, we don't even have the time to pray as we were, as we had one time. Okay? Do you follow, are you following me? Yes. 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 Then the third is the idol of obsession. Mm -hmm. Babylon had the, had the worship of all the nations surrounding. Chapter 18, verse 3. Everyone wanted what Babylon had and could not see the immorality and the sin they were indulging in. Verse 3. For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. What's happening in China now? What's happening in China with the wealth of China? It seems that Babylon will gain ascendancy. Okay? Okay. I am not predicting anything here. But the fact that this hasn't happened. And what it's saying that all nations will drink. All nations. Not from China. The wrath of her fornication. Fornication, it means that you're not married. Okay? Your fornication, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And the image of the, the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And they sign pact and treaty. And the merchants of the earth are watched rich because through the abundance of her delicacies. So we can see here. Glory to God. Everyone will want what Babylon has. Number four, they will be persecuting believers. The ba Babylon of the Old Testament and New Testament, they both persecute God's people. It was Babylon, it was Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon who took, destroyed Jerusalem. When they were going, if you remember what God said, that's where the text. Remember, we used to have a sermon all the time, prepare to meet your God. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where the text came from. Mm -hmm. They were preparing to fight Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar built um, what do you call it? Rams, batter, what you call it, mm -hmm. to, to punish them so they couldn't come out. Mm -hmm. We built those things around the city, besiege you, besiege the city. They were besieged and they were preparing for war. God sent the prophet to tell them, don't prepare to meet Nebuchadnezzar because it's not Nebuchadnezzar you're going to fight. It's me. I'm leading Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. And Nebuchadnezzar did tell them that it's God who sent him to destroy them because of their sin. Okay, so Babylon of the Old Testament and New Testament, they, they persecute the believers. Chapter 18 and verse 24. You will notice in chapter 18, verse 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Just as Jesus told in Acts 9, Jesus told Paul in Acts 9, when Paul said, Who art thou, Lord? Jesus said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, mm -hmm. whom you persecuted. Mm -hmm. When any country 
That's why I, if I ever get the chance to see Mr. Putin, mm -hmm. I would like to tell him how he's in his mm -hmm. God, grab him up. Mm -hmm. We'll grab him up or grab his, his liquor, his, his successor, mm -hmm. but by the nose and not the coat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like you go into a butcher shop. <laughs> In a butcher shop, at least you hang him up by the neck. And God's going to grab him up by his, his nose mm -hmm. and, and, Ms. and Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. Trust me. That's, you're looking, when you're looking at Ezekiel 39, you see how God is going to grab them up. Mm -hmm. And God gonna lead them down them down to a place called Megiddo. Mm -hmm. okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Now there is a there's a lack as a lack of the response to the first angel carrying the message and say repent, turn away from your idols. Mm -hmm. God had to send the second angel to pronounce judgment. Mm -hmm. Babylon could also refer to the entire world wide political, economic, and religious kingdom of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. God had to send the second judgment and said, Babylon is falling. Mm -hmm. That the city of Babylon <coughs> will be rebuilt and become the commercial center of the world is seen from such passages as Isaiah 13 and 14. Jeremiah 50 and 51. As the city of Babylon has never really been destroyed as such. Are you following me? According to the Old Testament prediction. So we can only conclude that it will be rebuilt and become a commercial center for the Antichrist kingdom. It will be destroyed at the end of the great destruction and the tribulation. Okay. Let's move on. Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 to 11. Here we found the first angel. What was the first angel doing against Selena? Selena. Now what was the first angel doing? Brother Jim. He was flying around. Flying around. Preaching the everlasting gospel. Preaching the everlasting gospel. What was the second angel doing? No, he was saying Babylon, Babylon is falling. But crying out that yeah. Babylon is falling. Now, the third angel that followed said them said in a loud voice, if anyone worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on their forehead or on their hand and, and he too will drink of the wine. Read your in, you're reading the King James, Janet? Yeah. yeah. Go and read it out, please. The same shall drink of the wine mm -hmm. of the wrath of God, mm -hmm. which is poured out without mixture mm -hmm. into the cup of his indignation. Mm -hmm. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Okay. okay. That you read verse 11, yeah? And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. They have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay. Um, believers, this sounds simple. Those of you that are listening out there, I want you to take note. When a person turn from God, reject God, the final outcome of that rejection is going to be terrible. Because God did everything to stop mankind from being lost. Notice the angel crying out loud, loud. His voice was like an amplifier. I grew up in a place called Danvers Spin in St. Thomas. If you're coming from Marant Bay, the capital, you come to York, then Seafood. Mm -hmm. Then you travel some miles, come to Danvers Spin. When a sound system is playing all the way in Seafood, where I lived on the hill, I could hear everything. Mm -hmm. 
when my mother stay on the hill and call me at the riverside one mile away I can hear everything my mother say you understand me Jesus stood on the mountain and the Bible said listen what the Bible said and don't believe anybody who tell you that he didn't have amplifier and microphone and how could 5,000 people hear him okay the terrain itself is able to carry sound okay if you go on some places you can stay here and call Abigail Abigail will not hear you down Seymour Road but if you're on certain mountain range and terrain yeah. you call Abigail and it reverberates yeah. Yeah. okay yeah. this angel um, who I saw with um a bill, a liquor, I was at the, the thing here on Saturday, and somebody had a little thing. It's not as big as this box, a speaker, and they're playing on their phone, and the speaker box was blowing like a big time amplifier. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Remember, it's God who gave, it's God who gave man the ability mm -hmm. yeah. to make amplifier. Daniel said, God said to Daniel, Daniel, go your way, in other words, die. Mm -hmm. Shut up the book. Mm -hmm. For the time is come when knowledge shall increase. Mm -hmm. Men shall go to and fro in the earth. Mm -hmm. That's what God says. Shut up the book because it's for the end time. Mm -hmm. It would not be surprising then, believers, if um, an angel could proclaim with a voice, mm -hmm. From Scotland, and you can hear all the way in Bristol. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. All right, that sounds funny. Mm -hmm. But it is a voice of the Lord Jesus Amen. that will raise every dead in Russia, Singapore, Africa, mm -hmm. every continent. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. It is God who called the universe into being Amen. and said, Let there be. And light, light of the whole world, and darkness enveloping part of it. Hello. Let's realize the powerful voice of God. Amen. So the Bible said that there is no rest. The angel is shouting, warning people, warning backslider, warning sinner. Press a button, somebody, and send this to your, your unsaved son. There is no rest day or night. For those who worship the beast and his image. Or for anyone who received the mark of his name. Mm -hmm. Can I remind everyone that listening tonight. That in Ephesians 1 verse 13. Every believer is sealed from the moment they receive Jesus. Yeah. Amen. As you look in chapter 13. Every person who rejects God. Also takes a mark. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Notice the text talk about the cup of God's indignation. It symbolizes the place of God's punishment of sinners. Yeah. The fact that they use the word torment day and night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Day and night. Yeah. I'm, I'm not talking about for a minute when we go to hell the fact that we are there it's torment itself because you're remembering what you did hear the call when your mother was praying for you your father was praying for you your grandmother was praying for you but you were too big the preacher preached to you and you laughed hello the fact that this torment will take place in the presence of Christ and of his angel make the punishment even more intense and shameful. Mm -hmm. They will pay the eternal price of having chosen Satan mm -hmm. and he will over God's righteousness. Mm -hmm. The third angel will pronounce doom on the worshippers of the Antichrist the great, during the great tribulation. Just as God the Father's name is on the 144 and Jesus Christ's name is on the Christian 
those who take the mark of the beast will be sealed with the devil's number, which is 666. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's no point me speculating and saying what 666 is. 666 is. 666 is. Because during the lockdown, every person who took the, 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 um, the um, virus, the vaccine, there was a machine that could tell you whether or not you're taking the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking, I'm not speaking against vaccine right mm -hmm. now. I'm just showing you how the, the technology we have yes, today. Yes. If you took the vaccine yeah. and you're going to try to travel and trick, trick the government you're trying to go, they, they're, they're, they're mashing that could tell whether or not you've got the vaccine or yes. not. There are people who also could get um, a, buy a, a, a vaccine, you know. You could buy a vaccine too. I'm not talking about getting the property. You buy it as well and yeah. getting showing that you have a, an NHS bona fide yeah. thing. You pay a couple of thousand pounds or a thousand pounds and or three hundred. I'm saying you know, there are people, but you see if you have it and they want to test you. So I'm saying that it's not difficult then to understand. That even the person who rebel against God, yeah. thou of them already sealed their doom. Mm -hmm. oh Amen. Mm -hmm. He pronounced doom on the worshippers of Antichrist during the Great Tribulation. Just as God the Father seal his, seal his people, mm -hmm. the devil also will imitate and seal. But notice something here. What the text says about the cup of God's indignation. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So, we're saying that all these container ships will be heading toward Babylon. And then every one of them will look, and in one hour, one hour, whole of Babylon gone. Can you imagine yeah. you're carrying how many million mm -hmm. tons of uh, a car, mm -hmm. pounds of Ferrari mm -hmm. carrying to Babylon mm -hmm. and then to see that Babylon that you're going to sell them gone up. You have to carry them back. Mm -hmm. yeah. That company is going to be losing how much billion pounds mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. You're carrying how many containers ship as high as the, the, the Twin Tower. Mm -hmm. If you see some of those container ships. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible tells us, glory to God, God is going to pour out his indignation. Mm -hmm. I, I was saying to the Lord earlier on, I don't find people interested in the Bible. As years gone, when I first, I remember my pastor said he would give us 10p if we studied Genesis, um, um, Judges 13, I think it was, um, the, the, all this, the spies, the name of the spies. 10 P, you know, and don't ask if I didn't, I study them. But the 10 P, I didn't get the 10 P, but I studied them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Pastor forgot to give us the 10 P. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyone loyal to the Antichrist and his kingdom will suffer. The outpouring of God's collected wrath. Done with the full force of his divine anger and unmitigated vengeance. Psalm 75 verse 8, you can write it down. If we want to study the word, we will study it. The divine wrath that will be poured out is not an impulsive outburst. Of anger aimed at the people that don't like God. God's word has been telling us over the years about his response to the people who reject him. It's not because God is wicked, cruel, capricious, or anything like that. No, it's because you take the action, the decision not to 
come under God's protection, then God can protect you. And if God try to protect you when you turn to Satan, Satan can accuse God. There are, you found the term fire and brimstone. Have you got it? Praise God. Verse 18. They cried when they saw her smoke, the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like this great city? The wrath that will be poured out will be so bad that they will cast dust upon their heads, cry, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city. That's just a loss of a city. Can you imagine what people will cry? Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Um, as I thought, read verse, verse 19. And uh, can you imagine when people lose their soul? Mm -hmm. If they lose their merchandise and cry that way, what will they do when they lose their soul? Mm -hmm. um, if you look in... Uh, Chapter 19, verse 20 for me, please. Yes, ma'am. You will notice that all the people who turn from God, where they will be cast, fire and brimstone. Brimstone is something that God used to punish a lot of his enemies. Even when Israel was fighting against the enemy, there were times that God used hailstones and fire and brimstone, and it killed more people than what Israel himself did. God called it the lake of fire and brimstone. We have lost the fear of God. And that's what happened when Samson who was anointed. Lost the fear of God. Fire and brimstone is the same as what destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And just as the angel, do you remember it was angels who went down yes. and called down fire mm -hmm. from God above upon Sodom and Gomorrah? It was angels who grabbed Lot and his wife and his three daughters and pulled them out. Yeah. And they could, they said to Lot they couldn't do anything until he come out of the, came out of the mm -hmm. city. God is going to use the same thing. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14 verse 11. The smoke of your torment ascended up forever and ever. They have no rest day and night to worship the beast. To receive the mark. The word torment... And ascended up forever is a reference to the eternality of hell. Torment is the ceaseless infliction of unbearable pain. It's prescribed for Satan, but the people who followed him will get it. The lack of rest day and or night is a to in total contrast of how God's people will be. They will be in peace forever. Glory to God. You remember that song? I want to live with Christ. I'm the only person who remember that song. Mm. Well, don't be jealous because I don't tell you not to learn God's songs. I want, I can still hear Brother Smith and Sister Simon. I want to live with Christ, with Christ for him. And he used, they were just wicked in it, singing that song. The peace that will reign to know where you live. There's no death, there's no mourning, there's no sign, there will be no crime. You will not, even, even you will not feel sorry for anybody. <laughs> you, you, in heaven, you can't have regret. Because from the moment you enter that place, 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. You don't, you, you, you remember. But there is always, Abraham will say to the people, you remember in your good days, in your time. You had your lot. Amen. Compassion we feel for people is now. It's to help us to reach them. But there, there'll be no compassion for the lost. They have made their choice. When God told Samuel that he rejected Saul, Saul, Samuel was there weeping and fussing and all that. God said, I've rejected him. Don't weep for him. So there, the, the scripture is saying that they rest not day nor night. Verse 11. Forever. Forever. Their torment is going up. And there's nothing God can do because they have rejected him. God done everything that could be done. He sent his son. Praise God. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, verse 13 of chapter 14. Look at the contrast. Believers are being killed. The unbelievers are in torment. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Notice from heaven, when thunder clap, everybody hear it. When God clap his thunder, amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, write it down, write it down, John. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Holy Ghost. They rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Amen. Hallelujah. Patience here is pers perseverance or endurance. Glory to God. Because genuine believers, when they are going through persecution, glory to God, is tempted to recant their decision. To... Um, renege on their decision for God. They are also given the chance to let go, give up. Like the three Hebrew boys, they were told mm -hmm. if they bow, if they just bow, mm -hmm. somebody would just say, why don't you just shut it? Mm -hmm. Yo, I bend the God. Just bow on a man. Just bow, bow, bow on your knees, but let your heart stand up. You know the, the story of the little boy who um, the father was, told him to do something and his friend was there. So he said he's not going to do it. Mm -hmm. The father told him to sit down and give yourself. Mm -hmm. And there because his friend's not the... So the father just go, didn't say anything, just go and get the belt. Mm -hmm. And as his father was coming, the boy just sat down. Mm -hmm. So his friend said, I thought you said you weren't going to sit down. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm standing up. I'm sitting down in my body, but I'm standing up in my heart. You know? So sometimes people really, glory to God, you hear it. Hallelujah. They are, they stand up against God in their heart. And here God has no alternative. So people will be saying to Shadi, can't you just bow, man? And you just bow your knees, man. And no, you're standing up in your heart. Tomorrow you can. Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm -hmm. decided that they were not going to bow oh, now amen. or ever. Mm -hmm. But here the Bible said, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, the Spirit, saith the Spirit, they may rest from their labors. Their work do follow them. Patience is what we need. Mm -hmm. The dead which die in the Lord from henceforth are great tribulation martyrs. They will be blessed through the resurrection, rest and reigning with Christ during the millennium. They will receive a reward for their work. And it's sometimes we get the impression that when God bless you, let me just use Sister Coleman, Sister um, Hey! What's her name again? Emily. 
Ellis. Ellis. Praise God. Let me just use Sister Callum and Sister mm -hmm. Ellis. Now, sometimes we as believers think that these people just, from they're just gone and they're just somewhere just sitting down and mm -hmm. not doing anything. <laughs> you know? But if you look at Luke 16, look at Lazarus. Mm -hmm. The rapture had not come yet. But Lazarus was enjoying. He was having a good time. Mm -hmm. a wicked time. You think God is just going to just cause us to sit down like a naughty corner or a good corner? Mm -hmm. No. From the moment we leave here, it's rejoicing. Amen. My grandmother, glory to God, she died for a, a couple of hours or so. But when she came back, when she talked about the place where she was, she didn't even want to come back here. <laughs> she did not want to come back here. She, she talked about the garden. She said there are no words to describe the garden that she was walking through. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 14, And I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man. Having on his head a golden crown and his hand a sharp sickle. Mm -hmm. Believers, there's going to be an harvest. Yes, amen. And he said, what did he say? Throw your sickle. Mm -hmm. The imagery is of the Lord on a cloud. It's found in Daniel 7 verses 13 to 14. It's also found in Acts chapter 1. You remember the two, two angels? The Bible mm -hmm. said they, they, as Jesus was speaking to them. Uh, to, the clouds are, appear and he was taken up into a cloud. And the angel said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is so taken up from you, how did he to go up in the cloud? So taken up from you, he shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. Believers, the word, the word, the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. He have on his head a golden crown. The golden crown. Why God so specific in these words? Anybody have an idea why? The victor's crown. Why the golden crown? Is that Jesus calling somebody? Amen. Praise God. Not on the mobile phone, Lord. Praise God. Now the victor's crown. The, 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 the writers at the time was accustomed to that, Sister Dorcas, because... The gymnasium, the um, the stadium, the winners always get a wreath, a laurel, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was important when the when the king goes out to conquer a nation, he always come back with the crown that the other king wear. Mm -hmm. He come back with the crown to show that he conquered. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, that's why Daniel, David, had to cut off Goliath's head. Mm -hmm. yeah. And showed mm -hmm. the head. It's just the head he needed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you showed Goliath's head, it mean that you kill him. You kill him. Yeah. Nobody else could go and pick up Goliath's head and carry it. It's David the only person. Yeah. Now here, Jesus had the golden crown. The fact that it was golden, it was just to say it was totally different from the one that the people of Rome and in the Colosseum would experience. Mm -hmm. He had in his hand a sharp sickle. The imagery of, of the Lord on the cloud is from Daniel 7, as I said. A golden crown is a victor's crown, mm -hmm. worn by those who celebrated victory in war, uh, in competition. Mm -hmm. Christ now wears this particular crown, in this case, made of gold as a triumphant conqueror, coming out of heaven to prevail over his enemies. Amen. Trust in the seeker. It's an harvest tool. With a, it's a sickle is a harvesting tool with a razor sharp curved steel on iron blade and wooden handle, commonly used by ancient farmers, ancient farmers to cut grain. It represents a swift devastating of judgment. And Jesus here was told to cast the sickle. Another angel came out, verse 15, out of the temple. Notice where they were coming from, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Trust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for the, to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Harvest of the earth here is, is 
the grain in this case is ungodly people of the world mm -hmm. is ready to be gathered up and judged amen and he that sat verse 16 on the cloud trusting his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped the crown pictures him as a ruler of the earth and the sickle symbolizes judgment mm -hmm. as an instrument of the harvest mm -hmm. the time has come to finish the judgment of the earth the second coming of Christ is here alluded to. Verses 17 to 20. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven. And he too had a sharp sickle. 18. Still another angel who had charge of the fire came from the altar. And called in a loud voice to him who sat on the ark with the sickle. And the sickle had the sickle in his hand. Take your sh sharp sickle. Gather the cluster of grapes from the earth's vine, because the grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathering his grapes, and threw them into the great wine press of the wrath of God. So these were not believers. These were sinners. They were thrown into the wrath of God. They were trampled in the wine press outside the city. Blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as a horse's. Now, you will notice that it um the blood rise here a hundred and six sixteen hundred miles to the horse's bridle. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of dead. Mm -hmm. This is referred to the Battle of Armageddon. This is where the Russians, the Indians, the um Persians, which is Iraq, some of the Arab and the African countries like Ethiopia. And all of them will be a part of this. And they will be all going. But the Bible tells us a few months ago, we studied one of the chapters in Revelation. I forget which chapter. It said there were frogs, spirits, like frogs, mm -hmm. leading them. Mm -hmm. Leading them. Mm -hmm. We'll be surprised how much evil spirits lead, lead in, on our, in our time. Yes, sir. But there were, um, there were as it, four frog like spirits just sent to just call them into battle, carry them away. Mm -hmm. The reason why all of them, if you look in Ezekiel, the Bible said they were going for the spoil. Mm -hmm. Now, Israel had never boasted in that oil, but Israel had something that the whole world needed. Mm -hmm. In the book, in the river Jordan, there is enough potash. To manure the whole the entire world. And with the heat wave and the weather condition that's changing and the population increasing. Um Africa, probably seventy five percent of some of those countries are under thirty five. Mm -hmm. There are then you know, majority of the people in some many of the African countries are young people. Now it's either they are going to build their economy on technology rather than farming. But farming cannot be done away. That's Jesus calling us to darkness. Praise the Lord. Do you hear over our phone? Jesus ring her phone. <laughs> it's God. It's ever done. But, uh, he should know that he's turned. Amen. All right, I'm going to close because every time he's calling Sister Darkness, which I thought it was annoying. Okay, where was I before? I was so <laughs> Praise God. Um, let's remember, above all, that God is in charge and nothing that is happening on earth is out of God's control. Even the little trials that we are going through, they are big to us. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They are big to us. Mm -hmm. But all God is doing <coughs> is going to be gathering the, these demons mm -hmm. will be leading all these countries. Mm -hmm. And they are led as well already. You cannot understand how somebody could be so ferocious. Mm. Like Putin, Xi mm. Jinping, Kim Jong Un, Kim Jong Un, and all of them. You can't understand how some of them are so ferocious. 
and uh, the, and the, they are still reigning. It's because they're led by demon. It's only demon could do what they're doing. Okay, I'm closing because time is gone. It's no point me going through, but I want you to know that there will be so many people dying that for a thousand and six hundred miles, blood will be the ice of the horse. And uh, remember, it's not normal, normal horse that they're talking about. Horse was what John could only describe what they were riding. If John saw a tank, a battle tank, the only thing John would describe is horse and man and rider. But the blood will be up to the level. And uh, it's, it's hard to imagine what this will be like. But believers, I want us to be reminded that the Lord is in control and he's telling us all that shall happen before it happens. Mm -hmm. We have the word. So I beg of you, indulge yourself. Take time to study the word of God. If I miss one day reading, I know. Years ago I went to Jan Janet, you remember when we went to, used to go to Bingley Hall? There was a preacher by the name of Paris. I can't, I can't think he was the last um, convention we had there. It was named up by the name of Paris, something or another Paris. And he preached. And he said, he spoke of, is it Rubenstein? Yeah. He was a piano yeah. player. Yeah. And this is what he said. He practiced eight hours a day. And he was asked, why do you practice eight hours a day? And you're an accomplished musician. He said, if I miss one day's practice, I will know it. If I miss two days' practice, my close friends would know it. And if I miss three days' practice, everybody will know it. And he turned it round, he said, if I miss one day prayer, I will know it. If I miss two days' prayer, I will know it. My friends will know it. And if I miss three days' prayer, everybody will know it. One day less of prayer is a prayerless day. One day less of reading the Bible is deprivation. If it's not pronounced properly, for those of you who are listening out there, just pronounce it right for yourself. It's important that we study the Word of God. So, great being here tonight. Great studying the Word. I'm looking forward for the day when our Lord shall come. And looking forward in meeting those of you that we have never met before, although we met at the cross. But pray that we may escape the things that are coming on the earth. Luke 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape the things that are coming on the earth. There is coming a day of famine, the Bible said. Not for bread, not for food, not for water, but for the word of God. We're getting it now. Let's use it and take the opportunity to study the word of God. I am doing what God called me to do. Everybody must do what God called them to do. We are, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Let's bow our heads. Please. Our Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence tonight, we are so conscious in the need to study your word. You commanded us that we should study to show ourselves approved unto God a work and that needed not to be ashamed. Lord, we read in your words that in the time of Samuel, the word of God was so precious in those days. They had not heard from the prophets. The word of God was so scarce to those who had it. It's like jewelry. Lord, we pray right now as we come before you. Incline our hearts to the word. Incline our hearts to pray. 
And Father, the idols that we have set up instead of you, God, subtly they are around us. We don't even realize that we have set up idols. We have put things before you. But I pray tonight, God, that you would stir our hearts again. That, Father, we would resist mediocrity. We would resist nor the norm. God Almighty, that our church service would be just known for the songs, for the preaching, for the, um, the reading of the word and not the power of God. Lord, we pray that there will be a change, that we live in the atmosphere of miracles and of the supernatural power of God. That our young people and the new converts and those who have known you, God, we would be like the people who were in the temple when it was built. Those who remembered the temple in their former glory cried. Those who have never seen the temple and heard of it and now saw it. They were crying. The crying of those who knew, those who saw the friend. God, I pray that your hearts, Father, to, to love you again, to pray. We pray tonight for clarity that when we want to go back to revise the word, to hear it again yourselves and to know that you are seated on the throne you cannot be impeached we praise you tonight touch our hearts again speak to us Lord we pray thee we ask in the name of Jesus we say thanks amen, amen. amen. God bless you praise God let me just thank those of you for joining us again so God bless you. You can always send, press a button, share it with somebody. It's not for our glory, but if you feel like you've learned something and you want a friend, you can even send it to a friend and just say, come and have a discussion with me on this subject that you've heard tonight. And you can use it as evangelism. God bless. Amen.